plus, it's like plus or minus zero. <laughs> no help. Dang it, I cannot remember how to choose the plus or the minus here. Ah! <laughs> oh, well. See, this is why I need to teach pre-calculus again. I have put these in your notes, guys. There, I forget where I put them. I, I just stuck them in here somewhere. Anybody happen to remember whether that's a plus or a minus? Man. Rats. Where are those things gone to? One moment, I will find it. Maybe. Oh, it may be in my, maybe in the, I, I think it's in the calculus in a nutshell PDF, which I don't have on me, so. <sighs> Rats. Is it plus or is it minus? <laughs> no, no, there, it's either plus or minus. It's not plus or minus. It, it's one or the other. I'm just, I'm blanking on the reason to pick plus or minus. This is a formula for inverse hyperbolic cosine. Okay. Inverse hyperbolic cosine is actually the natural log of x either plus, not, it's not plus or minus, it's either the plus or the minus, square root of x squared minus 1. Right. That is kind of like this, so. <laughs> <laughs> By consensus. <laughs> tell you what, let's, let's just leave, I'll, I'll come back. To, I mean, when I have a chance to look it up, I'll tell you which is the plus or which is the minus. The point is, you can do this, and now if you, if you did this for cinch, what would the difference be? See this, if you did the same calculation for cinch, what happens is you have a minus here instead of a plus, which ends up giving you a plus one here, which gives you a minus one here. So we end up with like the square root of x squared, a similar formula, but with the square root of x squared plus one here. So there's also a formula for the cinch as a natural log of an algebraic function. And there's also a formula for the inverse tanch as the natural log of an algebraic function. So in some sense, the inverse hyperbolic functions are really natural logs of particular quirky algebraic functions. And you could have derived this first, and then to calculate the derivative of inverse hyperbolic cosine, you just differentiate this. That's another way. I think it's a harder way, though, actually. Yeah. If you take the Natural, yeah, natural log of 1 is 0. What, uh, yeah, because if you have x plus or minus a little bit less than the root of the Yeah, I'm just, uh, yeah, I, I just, well, uh, I'm just saying that if I plug in 1, it doesn't help me. Um, but if x gets bigger, then it gets the whole value of the approximately Here, let me try something else. Cosh of the natural log of 2 is what? 1 half e to the log 2 minus e to the minus log 2, right? What is e to the log 2? Right, what's e to the minus log 2? Mm. e to the minus log 2 is e to the log of 1 half. Yeah. So that's 2 minus 1 half, which is otherwise known as 3 halves. So this gives me 3 quarters. Yeah. And so that means that the inverse hyperbolic cosine of 3 fourths is equal to what? Natural log of 2. Because if natural log 2 goes to 3 quarters, 3 quarters goes to natural log 2 in the opposite direction. I could use this to figure out the plus minus, right? Maybe, maybe. So if I plug in 3 quarters, I'm supposed to get out natural log of 2. If I plug in 3 quarters into here, what happens? It's, it's, it's imagine. What? Oh man, what have I done? Oh, I'm a, no, that's not right. Really? And 
definition of the, the coach is supposed to be a plus e to the negative. Oh, 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 thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Oi, oi, oi. So that's one, uh, five, five, four, five quarters, right? Thank you, thank you. Oh, oh I, yeah, that, that's a bad feeling. So 25 minus 16 is 9, 9 sixteenths, yeah? So we're looking at 5 fourths plus or minus 3 fourths. But we want plus. Therefore, we must choose the plus. <laughs> Yay, all right. I'm sure there's a simpler way to see that. Sorry, guys. All right. Let's do something simpler. Oh, so I, one of the things I was thinking about, I have, I have all the quizzes scheduled for Monday, and I was thinking about that. That's not the best choice. Like, a lot of the reason that we have five-day-a-week class in here is so that you have more time for, like, the in-class working of things. So I think on the Tuesday, we're, I'm going to move the most of the quizzes to Tuesday in as much as the schedule permits it. Like, for example, quiz one, we're going to move to Tuesday. That way you have longer time to do it, right? Because some of these problems, yeah, I can do them in 10 minutes, but you need 30 minutes to do a 10-minute problem right now because you're still learning, right? So if I, there's always going to be some time pressure. That can't go away, but um, <clears throat> let's do the quiz. Let's, uh, quiz one is on Tuesday at least, all right? So. And so ask me again before quiz two. Probably quiz two will move to Tuesday as well because I, you know, I think that's an oversight on my part. I think about, wait a minute, I really should, should do that. Okay, so <clears throat> the final example for today will be an example of something called a recursive formula. So here, example, what was I on? Six, seven, K. Okay, so integral of sine to the power k of x dx. And here k is a, a natural number. And so what you do, this is really kind of neat, is you just peel off a power of sine like this. And then I'll let this be my, my u, and I'll let this be my dv. All right, so I get uv minus integral of v du. And if you don't mind, I'm just going to write down the derivatives here and not write off to the side this time. So what's the derivative of sine? I guess I should write off to the side. There's an issue here. Some of you are confused about this. Um, if I have u equals sine of k minus 1 of x, right? That means Wait a minute. Where's the trash can? Oh. Yeah. That means <coughs> sine of x to the what? To the power k minus 1. However, inverse tangent of x is not equal to 1 over tangent of x. So some of you are unfortunately getting sucked into that. That's, this is what we call cotangent. Now, some of you have avoided this pitfall by talking about arc sine and arc cosine and arc tangent. And um, I understand that. It's just not how I do. So. <laughs> Oh man. Yeah, okay, there, fit better. So du is what well, u, oh yes, um, sine k minus 1 of x, and then v was what? The integral of sine minus cosine x, right? So we get um, minus cosine of x here plus the integral of, um, oh goodness, find my, ah, yes, minus the integral of v, which was minus cosine of x, 
du, which was what? k minus 1, right? Times the sine to the, oh, see, look at this. Why did I did that? Why did I write this here? This dummy. k minus 1 sine k minus 2 and differentiate, right? So I also have to have a cosine of x dx. So let me just clean that up a bit. What we've got is minus, I'll put the cosine first, cosine of x sine power k minus 1 of x um, plus the integral of cosine squared of x times k minus 1 sine k minus 2 right of x dx. What can we do with that cosine squared? That's 1 minus sine squared x, right? So in view of that, what we have is minus cosine of x, sine k minus 1 of x, um, plus the integral of, you know, k minus 1 times the sine k minus 2 of x, right? And then minus k minus 1 parentheses, integral of sine k of x dx. What's so funny out there? Wait a minute. What is it? What, check this out, right? So this means we're back where we started here, right? See this? This is back to the, back to the beginning, right? So if you add, so here's k minus 1 minus, so I do what? I've got 1 plus k minus 1 times the integral sine k of x dx, right, equals to what? Equals to this stuff here, right? So minus cosine of x sine k minus 1 of x plus k minus 1 times the integral sine k minus 2 of x dx. And how can you solve, like the ones cancel there, right? See that? We get plus 1 minus 1. There's a leftover k. So then finally, just divide by k and we get the following formula. So just divide this by k, divide that by k, and then this is gone. And so there you go. That's a formula for um, integrating the power of sine based on what? Based on knowing the integral of the k minus 2 power of sine, right? So for example, if you know the integral of sine squared, right, you can calculate the integral of sine to the fourth using this formula. So you can piggyback like up two powers. If I know the integral of sine, I can use this to generate the integral of sine cubed, and I can use that to generate the integral of sine to the fifth, and so forth. We'll, we'll actually put that formula into practice next time in that sense, but questions or, yeah. I, well, I wanted to add k minus 1 to both sides. So if I've got minus, I'm over here I've got minus k minus 1 times the integral. So if I add k minus 1 to both sides, I just isolate this. And when I did that, 
I get one, I got one here, right? So I've got the integral plus k minus one times the integral, which just gives me k times the integral. But then I divided by that k to get to the final line. Yeah. So this is, by the way, this is exactly ex ex example 1.11 on page six of the integration techniques notes. So you can, you know, look at it there too. Yeah. So that second part of the formula there, that integral. Oh. Yeah. How, how is that less of a hassle than just doing a problem without the formula? Oh, I guess you need to try to integrate sine to the fourth to answer that question. Okay. Can you do it? Well, we'll look at that next time. So anyway, we're out of, we're out of time. I gotta. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. Um, mm -hmm. I can't figure out how to get the oh, can you, uh, our book on WebAssign. Our book on, oh, we don't need to get the book on WebAssign. We can get it through um, 